This episode of Market Talk is brought to you by Growmark FS. Keeping up on the latest in ag is a challenge to say the least, but there are experts nearby ready to help. You'll find them at your local FS. You can trust them to bring you customized agronomic grain and energy solutions born of the latest thinking. That's because FS specialists receive continuous training that keeps them current on the latest trends, practices, and technologies. So you'll get local expertise that's both exceptional and up-to-date. Visit FSSystem.com to learn how FS is bringing you what's next. And joining us now here on Market Talk, another wild trading day wrapping up the month, wrapping up the week on Friday. Had the USDA quarterly grain stock small grain summary. We got issues with Russia-Ukraine escalating again. We got the macro picture. There's just a ton of stuff going on in this market trade right now. Here to uh, help us walk through it and try to make sense of it, Dwayne Bussey, Bolt Marketing, is joining us today. Dwayne, always great to catch up with you, buddy. How are you? Uh, doing real well. Um, another... Friday, end of the month, and uh, another football Friday, so ready for that tonight as well, and youth football tomorrow, our last jamboree, so uh, I don't know, last week I coached and did six, like, mini little games, and I, I must be getting old, Jesse, because I was exhausted after coaching, and I'm just <laughs> standing there, so I can't imagine what the players do, but they're they're young and youthful, so they're fine. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like a marathon there last weekend, but, you know, hey, fall football season I'm down for that. I always am. I love it. You know, it, it's always um, a good way for me to hang out on the couch or in the recliner on a Saturday and a Sunday is to watch football on TV. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I think I got another weekend of that, which is great. The harvest is a little slow up here. Guys are just mm -hmm. starting to poke around in Northeast South Dakota. And we did like a hundred acres then ran out of beans that are ready. So it's, it's all right. We'll get things ready and geared up for next week. Definitely. Well, you know, you mentioned harvest and, you know, we, we have seasonal harvest pressure a little bit in the markets here the last couple of weeks. And typically this is that time frame that we do, but feels like some of that seasonal tendency being outweighed by all these other factors. Let's talk quarterly grain stock, small grain summary from Friday. USDA coming in uh, with a number on the corn side below the pre-report estimates. A very friendly number for corn, really tightened up those balance sheets. Friendly numbers in wheat, not so friendly in soybeans. Uh, let's just let's start with the core numbers, though. What are your thoughts after uh, seeing what USDA brought us on Friday? Yeah, basically, summary is they they took away 148 million bushels, basically from last year. I think it was slightly less on the yield, a little bit less on the acres. So they they lowered last year's production, but yeah, the end result is as of September 1st, we had 1.377 billion bushels, and that's 148 million bushels below what they had about a month ago when they had the USDA report. So, you know, it just it was already a tight situation. It just got a little bit tighter. That's the fun thing about this one. I mean, we're all talking about the yields right now and demand moving forward, but we didn't have a whole lot of corn going into this harvest, that's for sure. And that's why you saw the nice spike up in this corn market. But boy, did it struggle with that $7 mark again, when probably rightfully so. Yeah, that seven dollars. You know, before we started to take a little bit out of the corn market, it's felt like that seven dollar market corn is just kind of this psychological resistance it, it, overhead over top of this market that just uh, didn't want to break through. Dwayne, it's been tough to try and get past that number. It, it has been, and I've been bullish. And when I look at these supply and demand numbers and the very tight supplies in the U.S., I, I get bullish and. And look at that gap up at 732. And honestly, I'm going to store my corn and I'm going to target a run to that. However, in the short term here, are we running out of corn as we start harvesting? No, of course we're not. And, you know, these higher prices and the screaming higher U.S. dollars since the last time we talked, that, that will ration demand. So the trades got that as headwind. And I think it's going to be really tough to trade much above $7 with that headwind in the least the short term here, you know, another two weeks or so. Let's talk the soybean numbers as well. That was the number that was uh, a bit, uh, it wasn't friendly to the trade. I mean, we uh, we essentially added to last year's crop, according to USDA, and uh, on the video feed, I'm pulling up uh, uh, the chart that uh, Karen Braun posts on Twitter. She's with Reuters, and uh, I kind of borrowed this from her but she's very very good uh, good follow on twitter but just looking at that soy number Dwayne, um 
man, you know, adding to that soybean uh, ending stocks and adding to that balance sheet, what's this going to do to a soy market that already has maybe felt like it's had some pressure in it here the last couple of sessions? It has had some pressure lately, you know, the same ideas, a lot of the macro market news, you know, recession talk, China's demand might be lower. And then, yeah, so to add 24 million bushels to the ending stock from last year, this year's carry in, that's going to hurt this market. And it did today hurt it actually really poorly as we're, as we go into the close here around that 1364. I mean, man, that's, we haven't seen a close like that in a long time. So we ran some sell stops as we got into the end of the day. Probably overdid it though a little bit, Jesse. I mean, it, it's harvest and it's fine. I understand it can go down, but you know, we still got a tight ending stock here. And China was actually in in the last weekly export sales report was pretty good Thursday morning. So uh, I'm still a long term bull, but this chart pattern just turned a little bearish in the short term. That's for sure. And you know, come Monday morning, you know, I'm sure there could be some recession talk and macro selling. So. There could be some more selling pressure, but you know, longer term, I'm going to store our beans here as well and still look for that 1450 to 1550 actually for beans eventually because of how tight supplies are. If Brazil raises a record crop and doesn't have a weather problem, I'm going to be dead wrong. I'm betting somewhere in here, Jesse, this winter, they have a weather problem that'll force us back up. Well, and we've seen a decent start to planting in Brazil. Argentina's had some issues, though, so we know there's issues down in South America. So to your point, I, I think it's something that bears definitely bears watching here. Probably be the next real big talking point outside of the macro side and and geopolitical mm -hmm. issues here as we as we move forward through the rest of uh, rest of 2022, Dwayne. Yeah, I agree. When you, you know a lot of yield forecasts coming in, soybeans maybe a little bit higher. Corn, I don't think USDA is allowed to lower the corn yield now after today's stocks number. I mean, you know, they'll they'll fudge the numbers to make them work probably if they have to. But uh, my point here is that I think USDA is really close with the yield, and our weather season's done. So there isn't really a big headline news for a little while here, other than you know the slight demand here and there. So I think you're right. I think. Uh, Weather in South America is going to be your next movement or big mover when it comes to our futures market. And Argentina is dry and, and has been dry this week and trending dry. So not a problem just now, but it, it's something worth watching. But Brazil has had a great last two weeks and a little bit better start to planting than I was hoping they were going to have. Well, also, Dwayne, wheat on the quarterly grain yeah. stocks, uh, small grain summary. The quarterly grain stocks number came in right at the pre-report trade average, 1.776 billion bushels. But it was wheat production that was the big right. surprise on Friday, Dwayne. Right. Yeah, it's kind of misdeceiving there. You see Karen's numbers, and, and you're right. Karen does put great stuff on there. I maybe steal from her a little bit, too. Thank you, Karen, very much. But, um, <laughs> yeah, on the production side... Uh, 133 million bushels lower than what we were expected. So maybe demand isn't great because the stocks were okay. But with that less production, I mean, they took, what, 41 from HRW, 44 from SRW, another 30 million bushels from spring wheat. So all three of the crops were smaller than anticipated. Um, so that's a big deal moving forward. You know, the quarterly stocks, you know, different marketing season for wheat, of course. We just have less of it on hand than we thought. And like you mentioned in the intro to the show here, more Russia, Ukraine headlines. Obviously, Putin's annoyed and upset and, you know, annexed four territories in Ukraine this week. Um, but losing the war in other places, you know, threatening nuclear war, everything else, I... I don't think we're going to make it to the end of November when they've got that export, Ukraine export grain corridor opened. I think he's going to shut that early. And I think the market assumes that as well. Really nice trade in the wheat today. We came off the highs, but boy, that chart pattern looks really good and, and fairly bullish. You know, Higher highs than we've had for the last month and a, a nice way to close the month too. Yeah, and really overall Friday of the grains, it was a bit of that spreading corn and wheat against beans, uh, just kind of the overall trend with pressure there. But you alluded to Russia, Ukraine, and I think that's something that a lot of traders uh, ahead of the report on Friday, we were putting a little bit of premium in. A lot of traders are seemingly nervous about what those headlines are going to look like here over the weekend. And I think it's a, it's an issue that maybe some folks have said, maybe we've taken a little too much premium out here with everything going on in Russia, Ukraine right now. Boy, you wouldn't believe in, in these broker offices like ours, how often you hear, I don't think I want to do that before the weekend, or why don't I get out before the weekend? And I understand because man is 
that's a long time to not have a trade and you know you don't know what you're going to open up as sunday night so there's a lot of position squaring especially this friday uh, when you got a weekend in front of us you got the end of the month end of the quarter for a lot of businesses the end of their fiscal year as well so there was some definite position squaring and some spread unwinding like you mentioned between corn soybeans and wheat Dwayne, let's talk a little bit about the back row picture. Uh, since the last time you and I talked, you mentioned this uh, earlier in the show as well, uh, just the screaming higher U.S. dollar. And on the backdrop of everything, on the backdrop of USDA reports and Ukraine, Russia, et cetera, et cetera, we can't forget about the macro picture, the dollar. That's a, a significant headwind. It is going to be a significant headwind for the commodities as a whole here, it feels like, as we move through the rest of the year, Dwayne. It does, sadly. And I say sadly because, you know, as a producer myself, it's just more fun if the markets are going higher. But that dollar, you know, got up to the 114 level in the index this week. And we've pulled back a little bit, but I don't think anyone's calling for a top in the dollar yet. Um, I may be one that leans a little bit towards this futures market, which would include the dollars, probably going to put in a top before we know <laughs> that we're at a top and go the other way. But I, I can't call it a top yet. I, but what I'm trying to get at is, you know, these futures markets are called futures for a reason, right? We're already anticipating another one and a half percent increase in the interest rates. And so is the U.S. dollar. So, you know, there were some exports this week, experts this week that talked about, you know, another point and a half. And that's maybe all the further we have to go. And then the Fed will maybe just go sideways for a while. If that's true, the futures market is literally already pricing it in. So I'm holding out hope, Jesse, that we're close to a top, but yeah, I'm not an expert of the currency and I, any of the experts I do read, none of them are calling a top just yet. So that, that is troublesome for our demand moving forward. But, you know, thinking to your point, just with that dollar around 112, 113, 114, you know, it's making our commodities that much more expensive. And we think about export sales. You mentioned this earlier as well. Soybean sales were all right, but quarter wheat are just been been pretty dismal here the last couple of weeks since uh, we got those numbers back from USDA after their snafu. It just it mm -hmm. feels like, of course, you know, when our commodities are more expensive, People are going elsewhere to try and find, you know, corn, beans, wheat, et cetera. Uh, it, it just means, you know, it's that's another picture that we're going to be watching this export side. And, and how is this going to look the rest of the year and into the beginning of next year? Probably not great. If we stay up at these prices, the picture won't look good. No, you're right. I mean, like we talked earlier here, we're transitioning from our weather season, our questionable what's the supply. We know the supply is tight. And I think we know now, we know the old crop supply is very tight. We know the new crop, we have a good gauge of what it is. Like I said, I think USA has nailed it. It's not going to adjust a lot more. So now we're going to watch the demand side of the ledger moving forward. And that's what you do during the winter, a little bit slower trade then, you know, you watch for those export sales flash at 8 a.m. Haven't had many of those lately, but China was, like I said, sliding kind of underneath the rug a little bit and buying some beans from us this last week. The, the pace is still okay because we sold so much prior before the markets rallied up this high. And of course you get to these high levels, nobody wants to buy it, but they're still gonna have to, I think. You know, you look at China this week, soybean meal prices were actually record high. They're cash soybean meal prices. So they don't have a lot of supply there either. Now they did buy a whole lot of soybeans from Argentina here recently as they adjusted their, their peso and allowed their farmers to sell. So that's gonna bail China up eventually. But I guess the point I'm trying to make is on dips, I think our market's gonna be well supported because those end users, including China, are gonna be right there to buy any dip. Dwayne, we've seen crude oil come down, gas prices coming back a little bit, natural gas has taken a big drop lately. Any thoughts on the energy market here as we wrap up the month of September? You know, not an energy expert, but when we're getting in the mid seventies for crude oil, I start to actually kind of wonder if we're not close to a bottom, but that'll also tie back to my thoughts about the, the US dollar and interest mm -hmm. rates. Whenever those two top, I think crude oil is gonna be at a bottom, but it's so politically driven and any announcement can drive this market three or $4, obviously. Um, you know, for example, in crude oil, I know Biden yesterday was talking just a little bit about banning crude oil exports out of the U.S. to help us here. Well, of course, that <laughs> that could drive the market down further, of course, but I don't think that'll happen. So it's very political. But yeah, there's just a part of me that thinks mid 70s, 
might be a low. I'm sure hoping so mm -hmm. anyway. If I'm bullish corn at $7, I better not be that bearish crude oil at $75. <laughs> Very true. Let's talk livestock, Dwayne. Uh, hogs finding a little bit of support Friday after a fairly friendly quarterly hogs and pigs report. Maybe not as much support as we hope for, but still an okay day in hogs. What's your thoughts with hogs wrapping up the week, especially after those quarterly hogs and pigs numbers? A uh, rough week is what I think yeah. about the hogs. I, you know, I, they fell subject to the macro markets. Uh, I think there was a lot of fun saying, well, I, I'm on margin call in the macro market, so get me out of my hog positions. And somebody probably said, boy, but they're down three bucks. And I said, I don't care. Get me out no matter what. And that get me out no matter what snowballs into the trade we saw. But you're right. Uh, hog and pig report yesterday down like that 1.4% for total hogs. That's a little friendly yet. Um, we're definitely not building the herd. It's still retracting a little bit. Nobody wants to <laughs> expand on the herd when corn is 6 or $7, right? So it should stay that way. But uh, cutouts have been down a little bit, cash down. It, I don't have that much of a problem with the market pulling down. I think it's doing what futures do. Where come December, I think we are at these price levels. But boy, I don't think we have to go much lower than this. I think we're finding a nice bottom here as long as the macro markets hold together a little bit. And even if they don't, I wonder if the funds aren't out of what they wanted to get out of anyway this week. Weekly export sales were all right as well in hogs. Yeah. Weekly export sales were okay in cattle too. As we shift mm -hmm. our thoughts to the cattle market, what are your what are you thinking there as we wrap up the month? A little more choppy trade scene, I feel like, in cattle this week. Yeah, it, it wasn't a good close in the feeders there, was it? You know, we, we had that dead cat bounce yesterday, but that's sadly all it was. You need to see, even if you bounce $3, you need to see continued buying the next day. And we saw it like briefly this morning and it sold off hard here later and as the stock market's selling off this afternoon as well. So, you know, really nasty close there, but, you know, feeders in the 174 area, Boy, I think we find really good support because I don't think the cash market is going to go much lower than that. Um, the guys who feed are, are going to buy them in aggressively, and the Packers have been aggressively buying them, which lends me to think if Packers are buying calves, then they think the fats are going to be higher later on. You know, cattle on feed report last week didn't show me my bullish number. I was hoping I'd love to see placements drop eventually. We keep we keep advertising and saying that the herd's smaller and there's less calves coming. The problem is the drought. We don't get any relief from the Southern Plains or out West. So there's just more coal cows coming to the market and they go on feed, whatever. So it keeps those placements a little high. At least that's what I think it is. That's what I hope it is. So I think eventually these placement numbers start to drop and we will get well back above the 150 mark. Cash cattle traded a little softer this week, but I think that can bounce back too as we, believe it or not, get a little closer to the holiday season. Well, Dwayne, fantastic stuff as always. Uh, any final thoughts for us before we run out of time and let you go? No, just uh, enjoy the football weekend, I think, and then we'll we'll see the markets come Sunday night. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good uh, a good way to wrap it up. And uh, before we let you go, also, if folks need some advice uh, in these volatile markets, how can they get a hold of you there at Bolt Marketing? Yeah, they can call us here directly at 605 448 Two three six five, or though we can always check us out online at boltmarketingllc.com. Well, we always appreciate the time and insight with that, Dwayne Bussey, Bolt Marketing. Thanks for joining us on Market Talk today, and have a great weekend, Dwayne. Thanks, you too. And that's going to do it for Market Talk here today. Find us online, markettalkag.com. I'm Jesse Allen. Have a great afternoon.